once you stop trying to prove yourself, you can start being yourself. All right, Shalom. Coming at you with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who will well in grace and peace to you elect around the four corners of the globe, believing and pushing this truth in all sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your houses. This is your fellow servant, we'll call you from the GMS Orlando camp. And tonight, coming at you with a quick GMS walk and talk. All right, entitled, Once You Stop Trying to Prove Yourself, You Can Start Being Yourself. All right, tonight's lesson is inspired by an encounter that I had with a Jake today as I was making my rounds. And, um, you know, you still have a lot of Jakes out here trying to prove themselves. You know, what I mean by that statement, once you stop trying to prove yourself, you can start being yourself. What I mean by that is, once you stop trying to prove yourself to this world, you can start being the man and or woman the Lord calls you to be in this truth, all right, and assume your purpose. But, you know, through the encounter that I had with the Jake today, you know, you still have a lot of Jakes out here that are trying to prove themselves, you know, still trying to prove themselves uh, uh, worthy of, of recognition, worthy of, uh, of uh, rapport, worthy of reputation. Whether it be from the, their family members or their relatives, the people of this world, all right, still trying to prove themselves uh, uh, worthy in the sight of men, you know. And through the spirit, I want to bring out this exhortation to any Akim and Akwaf that may be in that spirit to stop. All right, stop. Stop trying to prove yourself to this world, man, because this world is temporary. This world was forged for the wicked. It wasn't forged for the righteous. And no matter how much proving you try to do, you'll never amount to what you think these people want you to be. <laughs> All right. No matter how much you do, you'll never amount to what these people want you to be, because what these people want you to be is consumed in darkness and wickedness. They want you to be a transformer. They want you to be an adulterer. They want you to be rebellious against the Heavenly Father. That's what they want you to be. And by you trying to prove yourself, you're falling deeper and deeper into darkness without even realizing it. All right, and once you stop trying to prove yourself to this world, you can start being that man and the woman the Lord calls you to be. You can start being that uh, that brick to the spiritual temple that's being built. All right, every man, there's a divert. The scriptures speak about a diversity of gifts, you know, which are needed for the edifying and the perfecting of the saints. But if you're still trying to prove yourself to this world, you're not bringing that gift um, to the ministry. You know, you're not you're not bringing your gift to the ministry that's needed. All right. Once you stop trying to prove yourself to this world and assume your purpose, that's when that gift is is, is allowed to blossom. The gift that the Lord gave you isn't allowed to blossom as, as, as long as you're trying to prove yourself to this world. That gift only blossoms once you've assumed your purpose in sincerity and truth. Holy. All right. Once you've wholly assumed your purpose and you start living for your how about shot. You start living for this truth. You start striving for the truth until death. That's when the gift that has been bestowed upon us starts to flourish and blossom. All right. And once you stop trying to prove yourself to this world, then you you can you start to um, be able to be yourself. You know that man and the woman the Lord calls you to be. You know. But I just want to get on here and do this quick intro. We're going to grab a couple of scriptures. Most of when this is edifying until you let. All right. But you know the point being in tonight's lesson. Stop trying to prove yourself. All right, stop trying to prove yourself and be yourself. Be that man and or woman the Lord calls you to be and bring that diversity of gift into the ministry because it's needed. All right, it's needed. And the only way to perfect that gift within you is through being yourself or assuming your purpose in this ministry. Not by proving yourself to this world because you'll never amount to the standard that these people want you to be on. Not if you're a righteous man or, or woman. Not if, you, not if you're righteous. You'll never amount to it. All right, but with that being said, let's grab these scriptures and then we'll close it out. This is Ephesians 4 and verse 21. It reads, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shah, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind 
All right, and it's important for us to put off that old man because that old man is still trying to prove himself. All right, that old man wants to prove himself that he's still down for the world and for Yahweh uh, Shem Yahweh Shah. You know, he's down for the world and the Lord, which is impossible. All right, the scriptures say you can't serve the Lord and men. The Lord requires a choice. Either you hot or you cold. There is no in between or on the fence. You either down or you not. All right, and that old man, quite frankly, he's not. All right, he's not down for Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. And when it all comes down to it, he down for the world. That's why it's important to put off that old man, that old conversation, that old way of life. You know, that old way of life, trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to seem like you down, trying to seem like, you know, be a, you know, you cool with everything. You know, it's all love. Put that off, man. All right, put off that old man, that old way of life. All right, because it's not conducive to the will of your heart by Shemel Shah. It's not conducive to your salvation. It's not conducive to the ministry. It's detrimental to the ministry and to your salvation and to those who are around you. All right. It says, once again, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shah, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after the heavenly father is created in righteousness and true holiness. All right. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, This truth has made us free. All right. Let's get that. This is Galatians. Let me slide it. John chapter 8 and verse 32. It says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This is a part of being renewed by the spirit of your mind. All right. Coming into the knowledge of this truth. And once we come into the knowledge of this truth, we're set free from the bond from the bonds of this world, man. You know, from the uh, the proven grounds of this world, we're set free from that, and we're given the confidence to uh, to assume our purpose. All right, we're given the confidence to stand for righteousness. All right, and that's why it's important, like it says in uh, the book of Hebrews, the tenth chapter, to cast not away your confidence. All right, this is Hebrews ten and thirty five. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. And when you go into this word for confidence here in Hebrews, it's par parousia, parousia. And the definitions read, check it out. All right, check this out. It says, all spokenness, frankness, bluntness, publicity, assurance, boldness, confidence, openly, plainly. All right, it says freedom in speaking, unreservedness in speech. All right, and through the spirit of power, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, this truth has given us the ability of free speech. All right, it's given us the opportunity to speak freely, whereas this world has to speak candidly, reservedly. All right, we've been given the power to speak freely. All right, unreserved in our speech. The scripture saying in Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud, spare ye not. All right, by trying to prove yourself in this world, you'll be subject to candid speech. All right, you won't be able to say the 100% of the Bible. You won't be able to say the Lord is coming to put to death homosexuals. The Lord is coming to put to death adulterers. He's coming to put to death the wicked. All those who are not getting down with this program, you're going to get your, going to get your head sliced off, man. You can't speak freely like that. You can't go out in the highways and byways because you're afraid your boss going to see you. Or your mammy going to see you, your auntie or your uncle. Whoever you, your friends, they're going to see you on the street and they're going to clown you. To hell with these people, man. These people is bugged the fuck out. <laughs> to hell with trying to prove yourself to these people, man. All right. Through the spirit, we've been given the confidence to speak freely. All right. We've been set free from the bounds of this world, man. You know, from keeping up with the Jones. We don't got to keep up with the Jones no more. You know, you don't have to prove yourself to these people no more. You just got to be who the Lord calls you to be. You just got to embrace your spirit and bring that gift into the ministry. <laughs> Man, it says freedom in speaking, um, unreservedness in speech, openly frank, without concealment, without ambi ambiguity, ambiguity or circumlocution, without the use of figures and comparisons. And you see a lot of this in these other Israelite groups. You know, they speak... Um, with uh, amb ambigu ambigu ambiguity 
and circumlocution. All right, they try to beat around the bush. All right, they don't want to offend. They don't want to, you know, uh, push the wrong buttons in certain people. So they speak in vague, in vague terms. You know, they say things that are pleasing to the ears. All right, because they're still trying to prove themselves. All right, they want to prove themselves to be of reputation. They want to prove themselves of being uh, of a high stature. You know, men of renown. They want to prove themselves. When the true proving is going to come from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, those who stand bold and those who are, are frank in their speech, those who are not afraid to stand against the evildoers, those who are not afraid to proclaim the 100% truth. That's who the publicity is coming to. All right? That's who the fame, that's who the, that's who the, uh, the true proving is coming to, man. So, like it says, free and fearless, confident, cheerful, courage, boldness, assurance. Hey, and we, through the Spirit, we've been given the power to speak boldly, all right? We've been given boldness, not only in speech, but in deed, all right? Pursuing the wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter in the first verse, and Ephesians the sixth chapter, uh, starting at the 18th verse on down, all right? We've been given the power to speak boldly, as we ought to speak, because these are the words of the Lord. These are not words, these are not thoughts. This is the words and the counsel of, of the source of creation. So these words ought to be spoken boldly. This is the authority over the earth. This is the way to righteousness. This is the way to uh, to life and righteousness, man. This is how you flourish life on earth. Through these words, through this council. This is how we're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is how we're going to accomplish the commonwealth of the nation of Israel. Through these words, through this council that's written in this book. So we ought to speak boldly. We ought to speak with authority. Because this is what it is. This is the truth. It says, the deportment by which one becomes conspicuous or secures publicity. <laughs> hey, and through the spirit, the confidence that the Lord has given his prophets has brought about publicity. All right, men are wondering, how the hell are these men are able to go out in the streets every week? These niggas don't miss a week. How are they able to cuss out the so-called white man and bring out all his wickedness on the street in front of his face? What, what is, what is what, what's making them do this? What's making them come out and preach these words in quote-unquote dresses? How are these niggas so bold? It's all the spirit and power. It's all through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel was shy. <laughs> you know? It's all through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel was shy. The Lord has given us the confidence to assume our purpose. To fear the Lord and to keep his commandments. All right? That's the whole duty of man pursuing Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. He's given us the confidence to assume our purpose. To embrace our gift, to edify, to exhort, all right, and to push his will. But let's close out on this. Bear with me real quick. going to be in Ephesians. Uh, let me see. So I keep it with me real quick. audience want to cut out. Hold on. It's like this is Romans chapter 12 and verse 5. 4. Alright, it says let me see. I'm going to start at verse 3. Shit, let's start at verse 1. <laughs> Alright, it says I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Heavenly Father, which is your reasonable service. All right, and this is the least that we can do for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai by offering up our bodies as this living sacrifice, you know, by being uh, the foolish of this world, you know, by being the cast out, you know, by being the hated. This is the least that we can do for, you know, everything that the Lord has done for us. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, and you present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable unto the Heavenly Father, which is your reasonable service. All right, you won't be able to do this reasonable service if you're still trying to prove yourself to this world. It says, and be not comforted, conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be able to prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of the Heavenly Father. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Hamashiach, and every one members of the, one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissim dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. All right, and through the Spirit, you know, there are many gifts uh, that many different brothers have. You know, some brothers can go into their history, some brothers are, are great teachers, you know, some brother, brothers are great leaders, some brothers are great uh, at exhortation. You know, some brothers are good at ministering. You know, so you have different gifts uh, that are very within within each man. You know, but each gift is important for the ministry. Each gift is important for the exhortation, for the edifying, and, and the uh, perfecting of the saints. All right, let's get that in Ephesians. Chapter 4 and verse 11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of a Mashiach, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Heavenly Father, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of a Mashiach. All right, and that's what we're striving for. We're striving for perfection. You know, each man that is in this truth, man, he's striving for perfection. All right. Each man that's around that's around me, you know, is striving for perfection. You know, and that's a beautiful thing to have men that are able to assume the position and bring their gift forth. Because not only does it help you, uh, not only does it help them, you know, it helps you. It helps you point out your weaknesses, your strengths, and you're better, you're better able to help the next man. You know, and the next man, and the next man. You know, as the scriptures say, iron sharpened of iron. You know, we all have to come together at the end of the day and present our gifts so that each man is able to benefit so that each man comes to uh, comes to their perfection, you know, before the Lord comes back. You know, but through the Spirit, that's all, really all I have to say on this topic. All right, once you stop trying to prove yourself, you can start being yourself. All right, stop trying to prove yourself to the, to the people of this world, man. All right, you're not going to mount to their standard. All right, and ultimately, you're going to draw further and further away from this truth and from your how about Shinya Washai. With that being said, Shalom, stay up.